guys, welcome back to the warehouse. Remember the warehouse, one that I bought sight unseen for $15,000. A lot of stuff. Might have been off more than I could chew. Well, in the first video, came through here, pulled out a bunch of stuff, about $35,000 worth of stuff. Made about 20 grand on our investment. But we're not done, you gotta see. came and made our first video, basically we had very limited time to just come through and get the biggest stuff we could find. After reading a lot of your comments and stuff, we realized some stuff that we kind of left behind or overlooked, such as pallet racking. We're gonna get all that. Um, just a bunch of miscellaneous nuts, bolts, hardware. I saw tons of comments from people saying, hey, that, that piece of rope is like $700. So we're gonna go through and collect all that stuff. But most importantly, today, we're on a mission to find trading cards that are worth like $200,000, supposedly, allegedly. So there's a box that we're looking for in here. And it's an old Trivial Pursuit box. I talked with the previous owner and they are telling me. My brother Ryan actually did. He lost a whole box of his like nicest cards. They're worth a couple, probably a hundred thousand dollars, honestly. Really? Oh yeah, he was a crazy collector. So if you find him in here. Dibs. Don't say that. <laughs> You're welcome. He... That if we find a box that looks like that, that's got tape wrapped around the middle of it, then we just found ourselves potentially a hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars worth of vintage classic trading cards. Guys, this is a big deal. If I can get two hundred thousand dollars or a hundred thousand, hell, if I can sell them for fifty thousand dollars, then I'm not gonna worry about anything else in here because here's the problem. In order to find these, we are gonna put masks on, we're gonna put gloves on, we're gonna put respirator on, respirators on. The force is strong with this one. I am no father. Because we're about to dig in pretty deep and the in here is, it's just disgusting. Like, look, 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 look. This, believe it or not, is like somewhat clean compared to the way it was before. But this is pretty much how the whole warehouse looks. There's been a lot of animals, namely raccoons, mice, birds, and they went, they took shits everywhere. Now, if you don't know much about mice, let me explain to you. Poop from a mouse can contain uh, a virus called the hantavirus. And if you breathe that in, you can get the hantavirus. And the hantavirus is no joke. Basically, long story short, we're gonna protect ourselves a little better today. Here's where we're at. You guys saw last time, there's rooms in here that are just literally boxes and boxes and boxes, uh, tipped over, uh, vandalism, like just the most random sh you could ever think of. But right on the other side of that wall right there is where we're gonna start. I saw some personal belongings in there, like it, like pictures and a couple letters when we were in here last time. And it got me thinking, if those items are in there, then there's other boxes with other personal belongings, which means maybe we're getting close to these cards. But you know what? Maybe these cards don't exist. Maybe it's just a big, you know, fairy tale and we're just wasting our time. But guess what? For $100,000, $200,000, I'm gonna roll the dice and take a look. for springtime. This room right here is probably the nastiest room in the entire warehouse. Um, it's like this deep dark corner where I think the raccoons and the mice and everything were living, but it also happens to be the one place where I've seen the highest amount of personal stuff, which is what we're looking for. We're looking for personal boxes and belongings. We're looking for that. And supposedly it has some tape wrapped around the middle of it. It's an old Trivial Pursuit box with some tape wrapped around the middle of it. That's what's got the cards in it. Yeah. Oh, just white socks for days. Look at this. <laughs> Look at this. This is really the main part with all the personal belongings. Everything else is all business stuff. There's a little bit of like the files and stuff right here, but the majority of it's in here. Every box. Real quick, I know you're enjoying the video, but I want to tell you something. I want to share a fun fact with you, and that is I love learning. Literally, guys, I am on Google and Wikipedia and all these different sites all day searching and looking things up and trying to, just my curiosity is always getting the best of me, which is why I'm super pumped to have come across the website Skillshare. So Skillshare is actually the partner of today's video, and it's good timing because I've been using their product 
to learn. Like they have this basically an online platform full of different instructors and members and people all over the world that create these classes that teach you anything from entrepreneurship, marketing, Photoshop, graphic design, web development, pretty much anything you want to learn is probably here on Skillshare. One thing that I've been digging into is on the business management side of things, there's a class that's called Body Language the Scientific Way. Um, and it's by an instructor named Nick Sarav. And basically what he does, he goes in and explains what body language does as you're communicating with people and how it affects them and how to use it more effectively. Because obviously I have a lot of employees, I have a lot of people that work for me and using my body language in the past has really helped me and it's hurt me. So basically this, you know, this class that's less than a couple hours long, uh, I can watch it and learn the do's and don'ts of body language. Even when I browse through this, sometimes I'm like, man, I didn't even know that I wanted to learn that, but I love it. And what's cool is I'm doing it alongside all these other members worldwide and the instructors genuinely care about me being able to learn the content. That's why they offer these new live Skillshare classes. So you can join a room full of a bunch of other members, you know, with the instructor there and sit there and actually learn together. Super cool community. And the best part about it is Skillshare has given me 1000 premium membership trials to give away to you guys. So the first thousand of you that click the link in my description below, bam, you're getting yourself a free trial membership to Skillshare Premium. Skillshare is for curious and creative people. It's for people who are constantly pushing themselves to become better. It's for lifelong learners. It's for, you know, it doesn't matter whether you have an office job or work with your hands, blue collar job. It works for everybody because the education on here is so broad and so diverse that no matter what your background is, there's something on here that you can learn that will help you in your career. Old mission letters like yeah, we got box of mission letters. Yeah, Elder Gardner. This area right in here looks like when one of my buddy's brothers left for his mission, they took all of his stuff and put it in here. So I did those like high school dance photos, yearbooks, letters. Uh, and he, that's the same brother who lost the baseball cards. Certificates to graduate. Graduate, like high school diplomas. Oh, yeah, keep that. So, uh, where's the box? Hopefully, there's something valuable in here. I guess his sister's stuff. This area has yeah. got to be a hot spot. Because there's so much like... Oh! Oh! oh, oh. oh, oh. Baseball cards! Whoa. Okay. Basketball. Okay. Look at this. Look at that. Bam! Bam's our, uh, our resident card <laughs> expert. See, this is, this is what we're talking about. This is what we're looking for. These, these ones might not be worth anything, but the fact that we just found a stack Dennis of Rodman. Really? Oh, yeah. They're all shape. nice. Yeah. John Stockton, all-star team card. Hell yeah. <laughs> are baseball cards more popular than basketball that cards? That just depends what cards they are. Like Dale Curry, Steph Curry's dad. Dennis Rodman, Chris Mullen, Horace Grant, John Stockton, all-star card from 91, probably valuable. Um, hey, Dave. There's some decent I cards in here. I just don't know what type of cards, if they're any good. This is a Conditions mint, like every single one of them. They're all, they're no water damage, no corners that's, aren't bent at that's all. That's an Aladdin's Castle token for arcade. <laughs> okay. That's what it looks yep. like. Combat boots. <laughs> I've got like a Letterman jacket. I've got mission papers. I've got freaking someone's elder Fu Fu or Fulu or something. I mean, we found, dude, we found like some baseball cards today. Some like, I mean, like I said, there's like a Letterman jacket. There's like mission stuff. There's like. It's got to be in those. No, but this has like Michael Jordan cards, Kobe Bryant cards, a, a Mickey Mantle card. Shoes, socks. We need the poo slippers. Got a good feeling about this. This whole area got a lot of personal stuff in it. This is like a nice china set here. This is what we didn't do before. When we came through with the tractor before, we were just getting big, obviously valuable stuff. But now, digging through each and every little box is a lot more disgusting, but the payoff could be way. Yeah, no, this is disgusting. This is probably one of the grossest things I've ever done. Because this pile, by the time we get to the bottom, I'm going to mess up. Hey, you Paul boys want a box? Get it? Ah! 
Beckett Baseball Card Monthly. See this, this is what's exciting because if he had these, it means the cards are in here. What we're looking for, stuff like this, like old sports memorabilia. This is a Wheaties poster. That's like, oh, what? Another one. What, what, another what? Another Wheaties poster. Oh, hell yeah. Five of them. What? MJ. So this is what I'm talking about. Look at this. So with a, with these posters, I'm gonna take my mask off because this is exciting. Uh, I don't actually don't know the value of this, but basically they would put these posters inside cereal boxes and you'd have to collect them. So right here we have basically Michael Jordan's legs. So that's the bottom of this poster. So if we can find that, that, and that, this is way more valuable. Um, what do we got there? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hell yeah. We got Michael Jordan's torso. We got his legs, his torso. I'm, here, if this is his head, this could be seriously valuable. Please be his head. Dude, look at that. We got the full special set. So basically these three posters that we have make up that right there. That's, I gotta Google Whoa. that. So another Beckett baseball card magazine. We gotta check these pretty well because there could be cards actually stuffed inside these. It's crazy how much money cards are worth now. The trading card world, like my buddy Dan Fleischman has a business down in LA. What's it called? Coffee breakers? Yeah. Where all they do is, it's like a coffee shop where they just sell trading cards. And uh, there's cards that are worth like hundreds of thousands of dollars. Every style of card. We got a mission journal. So finding a bunch of personal stuff too. It belongs to my uh, buddy's brother, like his Eagle Scout award. Uh, oh, 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 Ooh, what card is that? Terry Steinbeck. Not in great shape. A good and a bad sign. This is a, this is the you know a collector's card, classic, but it's in terrible condition. So we're hoping that the majority of the cards that we find, if if we find more, are in better shape than this. We found a handful of really good basketball ones, so that's a good sign. There's still so much valuable stuff up here. Got an old Dewalt table saw, like a big industrial one. Found a big band saw. I mean, right there, those are, that's at least five grand. Money keeps stacking up. Find another little table saw. We're gonna grab the old ice cream machine. Uh, man, there's a lot of stuff we didn't get last time. And there's probably still a bunch more stuff that we're just gonna leave behind and just forget about because came in here like rip roaring, ready to go. Still feeling good, but. There's a lot of sh but there's literal poop dookie in a box. Like I found, Probably like a box like this, full of poop. Little poop, human, raccoon, my, mouse poop. In that crate over there, yes, sir. that whole speaker box is just full of poop. Hey, I'm your biggest fan. It's a lot. This whole barrel is one parachute. It's gotta be like an old military cargo chute. That's awesome. Picture this. All right, guys. Let me give you a little update here. No luck on finding the Trivial Pursuit box. But we did find a bunch of miscellaneous boxes full of random stuff like these. Handfuls of cards. Like, they're, oh man, down. They're, they're not organized. They're not in like a nice box but there's just tons of them scattered throughout these different boxes. So rather than sit here and go through them in the warehouse and potentially lose and damage them, we're gonna, we got uh, one, two, three, probably got like five or six boxes of stuff we're gonna take back to the shop and go through there uh, delicately to make sure that we don't damage any, you know, cards that are potentially weak. And maybe we've got something valuable, but I didn't see the Trivial Pursuit box, which supposedly had like, you know, the hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of cards. But then again, they could be scattered throughout these other boxes, so. We're gonna go take a look, and then uh, I think we're gonna bid the old warehouse farewell. Have the guys come up here and grab a couple more of the big things um, that we came across, we reminded, uh, saw today, like the ice cream machine and some of this other stuff. But I think for the most part, the rest is just stuff that we don't wanna go through. So here we go, wish us luck. It's time to dig through some trash. So you saw, we went up to the warehouse, we brought back 
pretty much everything that we thought maybe was worth something. Now our time at the warehouse is done. We're gonna dig through this, see what happens. Much later. <laughs> Get in. Much, much, much later. Whoa, 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 wait, wait. Hey, come here. Passport. Ooh. That's an oldie. VHS tapes. Ooh. Did you call these VHS tapes? Cassette tapes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just glad you found VHS tapes. This, hold yeah, on, hold this on. This is Luis Miguel. Wait, look he at has a Luis Miguel? Wait, 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 wait. Oh! You found the cards! What did you find? Oh, snap! Bob Turley? Bro! Wait, 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 wait. This is not a Trivial Pursuit box. Is there a Trivial Pursuit? Is there more stuff in there? There is all the family board. Don Larson. Dude, look at the goosebumps I just got! Will Chamberlain! <laughs> oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Bro! I don't know a single player. I have no idea if this is the actual box that they're talking about, but there's definitely some good cards in here. <laughs> no, they say they said it's in a Trivial Pursuit box, and this Wait, is definitely not their, the collection. Here's all their family... I mean, no, there's... it's well. I'm saying board games yeah. in general. Babe oh, Ruth! No, there was no Babe Ruth card. <laughs> <laughs> we found... So our search has gotten progressively more exciting. Uh, we got through all the family documents, found a small box full of cards. Some of them just random floaters. Some of them very well preserved, like in sleeves and stuff, including Whitey Ford. <laughs> I don't know who Whitey Ford is. Where's the Babe Ruth card? What right about here. the unibrow? Babe Ruth! We just found an actual Babe Ruth card. You can see it's been in the sleeve, like worn God, that's down. That's so awesome. <laughs> I'm like literally shaking right now. This is rad. Um, okay. Okay, this is a good sign. Hold on. Brace yourselves. It's OJ Simpson car. Oh, we got the OJ. Yeah, OJ. Oh, man. Did it come with a glove? <laughs> so, one thing about my. Oh, I got to call Dan. That is awesome. What up, Gardner? Look at that morning face. We got morning face. Hey, buddy. <laughs> hey, uh, I wanted to show you something. I wanted you to be the first to see it. Tell me you found the card. <laughs> we found your old OJ Simpson card. Bro, look at this. <laughs> Wilt Chamberlain? No, you did not. Have you been up all night? Bro, we've been up literally <laughs> all night going through boxes. Look at this Wilt Chamberlain card. And? Dude, don't just drop them. Those things are worth like you got 50 grand. I know, <laughs> dude. I'm getting ready to call my buddy who has a card shop so you can take Lots a look at it. But bro, Yogi Berra. look at all the shit we had to sort through to find these. There's boxes of car parts and board games. And I'm pretty sure I found your mom's passport. And the Tootie Robbins was right on top. Don't worry. <laughs> I can't believe you found them. Well, Ryan told me to look for a Trivial Pursuit box. And it, well, we didn't find that, but we found a bunch of board games. And then this little box right here, inside a box of like important documents, like the passport and stuff. I cannot believe you just found that. We found, I don't know if we found the cards, but we found some cards and Crazy. some really awesome cards. This is exactly what I was hoping for. You still got goosebumps. Bro. I know, dude, I'm freaking, <laughs> did you see Dan's reaction? Like, that was my, so Dan, who we just FaceTimed, that is, you guys probably saw him in the first vlog, but if you didn't, he's the son of the guy that we bought the warehouse from. His older brother is the one who lost these cards. And when we bought it, we said, all right, if we find the cards, we're keeping like everything. They're like, all right, fine. So we did it. We found the stash. I'm a not gonna stash. lie. I, yeah, that's true. There could be a lot more cards this, still left at the, at the warehouse. This is when you're gonna wanna hang on to. I don't know a ton about trading card value, but I do know that cards, like, I, I'm not an idiot. Babe Ruth card preserved in a sleeve like this. Like that's gotta be worth some big money. So I think what we're gonna do is my buddy Dan Fleischman is, he has a card shop down in LA called Coffee Breakers. And it's funny because he actually just opened this not too long ago because trading cards are getting super popular, which is kind of what sparked my interest to potentially buy this warehouse and find some cards. So now I think I'm gonna call Dan, see what he thinks. And we're probably gonna go ahead and just hop on a flight straight to LA 
to figure out what these things are worth. If, if he thinks they're worth anything. So I'll call him, see what's going on. And then uh, we're going to preserve these things a little bit better than they currently are. Ladies and gentlemen, this just got exciting. All right. Okay. So he said, clean up the mess. Which ones do you want? Yeah. I don't Which know what want? he's talking about. Which ones of these do you want? Give me the paper with me. He, right. You gave that to him and said, keep this. You can't take the uh, one you told him to keep. He knows Babe Ruth is in here. Yeah, he, that's the only player he knows. He doesn't know that Whitey Ford guy or Mickey Mantle. He said those multiple times. He said those. Think of like a like a C-plus player. Will Chamberlain. Many hours later. Headed to LA. I called my buddy Dan Fleischman. Uh, like I said, he has a card shop down in LA. Told him some of the cards we had. And before I even got through reading the list, he's like, get to LA right now. He's like, bro, the market for cards right now is insane. Like, you've got yourself a lot of valuable cards. So, that's a good sign. Um, however, cards are, like the main value comes from their condition. So, we're gonna go down, get the cards graded, checked out, and uh, see what happens. So right now, we're leaving the Salt Lake City Airport, flying to LA. We're in LA, headed to the Coffee Breakers to meet up with Dan Fleischman to see, you got the cards? I hope. You're the last person we should have let carry the cards. Hopefully TSA didn't confiscate them, check. So we're, uh, Headed in to see what these cards are worth. Pretty damn excited because even though I'm not really into trading cards, I feel like we got some good ones. I hope they have Pokemon cards. That would be sick. Told you about the cards. I think we've got something awesome. I don't know. I don't know anything about cards. Literally, as soon as we found them, I was like, this is Dan. Dan's got to know something. Yeah, I'm with you? Yeah, bro. Oh, really? Yeah, I want to see. All right, so tell me the story, though. You... So here's the deal. I bought a warehouse, right? Literally had to buy everything inside of it. Old man, good friend of mine, and literally pulled like boats, engine, like literally oh, you shoot. name it, we've wow. got it in there. Old military <laughs> equipment. And my buddy told me that his older brother had a stack of cards in there, like an old like card collection, like a big card collection that they stashed in there like 10 years ago, 20 years ago, yeah. and they kind of misplaced. And so we were looking, and we've been finding a bunch of loose cards all over the place, finding a bunch of clear cards and stuff. But supposedly there was a box, like a Trivial Pursuit box, like a big one full of like really high-end cards. We didn't find that box, but we found this box that looks like it has some high-end cards. They're all like in cases and stuff like that. So I don't know, you guys found it only OJ takes Simpson? one. OJ Simpson, yeah, OJ, OJ, OJ Simpson, right? OJ Simpson, and Mulrine, and the Safe Group. So, we got, these are the first cards we found, which I kind of Googled these, a bunch of FLIR cards. I don't know if there's anything valuable there. Oh, those, those are cool. Yeah, yeah. But we this go. stuff is where it feels like there's some value. I don't know though. This. If I get anything in a case like this. Where's the Babe Ruth card? There's like a Babe Not Ruth so card. much. Keep pocketing yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, I've had to okay. Those are gotcha. what gotcha. we call junk wax. It's because there was overproduction. And so during the 80s and 90s, they would produce tens of millions of cards. And the whole point of this game is supply and demand. Right. And so if there's four million of a card. Scarcity drives. Too much supply, not enough demand. If you've got like a rare, like a Babe Ruth, and there's only 400 of them. Well, there's more than 400 people that are fighting for that card, right? right. Switch on. Yeah, gotcha. So the next part is when you find a card like this, is then checking on the edges, the centering okay. is important, the corners, the fading. Then you're going to get it graded. There's a couple, There's three different grading companies. The main one is called PSA. Okay. And then a grade will determine if it's PSA 10. The 10 is perfect, right? 10 is perfect score. Nine is super, 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 super good. Eight's good. Seven, you start to get lower. Six, five, four, three, two, one. So if you get a high grade on a card like a Mickey Mantle, it's out of this world. Really? I mean, like out of this like world. Like a PSA 8 Mickey Mantle just sold for uh, $1.8 million. This is when we're saying a PSA card. This is graded by PSA. It's the perfect card in its So when they grade it, then it comes with this little... Yep, this label certifies it, lets yeah. you know that. And you can look up this number, and it's in a database, and it tells you, hey, there's only... 40 of these or 50 of these or two of these. So there's a population report that shows you how many of these are out there graded by PSA. But you can get these graded. So if right, I get right. them raw, you're gambling, right? right? If you buy this card raw and you get a PSA eight or nine, the raw version is like $5. The PSA eight or nine could be 5,000 or 10,000. Yeah. And so you're gambling by buying it raw. It's good to buy raw if you can, but get that an eye for it, right? We're gonna go through a ton of these cards. Who grades them? So PSA is the biggest company. Yeah. There's also BGS, SGC, there's some smaller companies, but okay. PSA is your is the big daddy of the space. Gotcha. Bro. So here's an example. This is a raw card of this same card, right? Yeah. yeah. If we were to grade it and it gets a this is just the autographs grade on this card. But this card itself got a four. So this you got for pennies pennies, right? right. That's only a if four. If this grades well, which I think it's gonna get, I mean it's pretty good card for how old it is. 
I mean, if this is a four, I feel like this this is at least a four. I mean, right. the, the edges, the corners on this one are way, you know, more rounded. Oh, yeah, yeah. A lot sharper here. So this this card's, you know, roughly four to five thousand dollars depending on the day what? and how you know where we're at for one card one card yeah Holy and this is a four if you get this in a 10 right. i mean it's it's just oh, they're really dramatic. Dramatic. that card oh, yeah. looks pretty good for a four <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> well, what would they, they rank me as <laughs> right? this one is this <laughs> one just the autograph got graded on this card oh so gotcha so the autograph is a 10. correct the card gotcha. didn't get graded on this one just the auto did okay i would suggest sending these definitely these lose i mean we'll go through them all but these wills to lose the Walt Frazier's. What the tends to be the more more like expensive cars? Baseball, basketball yeah. doesn't matter. Yeah. Tootie, Tootie, Tootie Robbins. Robbins. Uh, Wayne Gretzky <laughs> card. Hockey's not that <laughs> big a demand, but Wayne Gretzky is like still a six-figure card. Is it really? PSA ten, PSA nine goes to five figures. PSA eight is lower. PSA so each sport has its own like iconic cards. Even Magic the Gathering, Pokemon, all these other games they have six-figure cards yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. So. Baseball has like the crazy, crazy cards. Like another uh, Mickey Mantle sold for five point two million dollars. PSA nine just sold yeah. for five point two million. Who's buying these? There's two PSA tens, I believe. Like and the guy that wants twenty five million. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh! There's only two in the world though. So if you're looking for that perfect card in that Mantle PSA that, ten, how old of a card is that? From fifty two. Gosh, you have a 58 man here. Yeah. This is insane. This is like a whole new world to me. So just a little recap here. I know, I'm the king of recaps. Dan and these guys have a shop here. The front is kind of like the front retail showroom. In the back, they have what's called the breaking room where basically they get boxes and boxes of brand new cards and they sell them to people on the internet and then they open it for that person and show them what their cards are. And that person can make a lot of money or no money or like depending on what the cards are. It's a genius business model. They've got cards in here that are like 50 grand a piece. It's insane. Check this out. This is the way this business works. This is genius. They have this big inventory of cards, unopened boxes of cards. They go right here and they set up a camera and they go live. Fans then come online and say, hey, I'll buy a box. They grab a box, pull it over here, and they break it open on camera. The fan could be in Nantucket watching this thing. And then all of a sudden he's like, hey, I like that card, I like that card. You're, you're buying cards and opening the boxes without even touching them. And then once they're opened, you ship them out. <laughs> Genius. And so they can say like, you can grab a box and say, no, I want the other box instead. Of course, absolutely. And with, when we open the box, you can say, no, I want that pack. Sell me a box. No, we do it right now. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Sell me a box. No, we do it right now. <laughs> no way. Mr. Blaze. Hold on, now, which one do you want up there, man? You gotta pick which yeah, one you want. Yeah, you gotta. Don't you just gotta. let him pick it, you gotta yeah, this you pick it. <laughs> fill it, fill the power. Yeah. Do you have a scale? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Pokemon—that's like a known thing in Pokemon. Like it's it's, it's talked about. Yeah. Um, certain packs from certain uh, years, if they weigh X amount, then it for sure has a hollow in it, and this and that. And people will pay Jeez. more because the pack weighs twenty-one point seven grams instead of twenty do. grams. Wow. Um, the heavier. Yeah. It's very yeah. better. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I just bought myself a Pokemon. How much is this? Five hundred bucks. Thousand bucks. Yeah, about. 400. Okay, I, got, I just bought a $400 box of cards. I have no idea what's in here. I'm not familiar with Pokemon whatsoever. I'm not going live, fortunately, because I would get roasted by the Pokemon fans. Uh, I'm probably gonna get roasted by all you guys anyways. But uh, is there a, do you just, do you just open it? Yeah, just, sure. don't, just don't set the cards. Slice okay? it out. So basically you take the, this is this is nothing, and then you count four, one, two, three, four, and then you go energy. Oh, I don't even know, Soul Rock, Kaboo. You got a Kaboo? Dunsparce, <laughs> Electric. Mr. Meme, Grimer, Clink, and then the back two, since I did the four in the front, yeah. the back two will be your hits always. Relicanth and a Skizzer V. Ooh, so yeah, every pack you open, just take out this. Take out the top. And then count four. And then <laughs> Listen, man, I so think what, what cards am I looking two. for? What are exciting ones? Um, there's Charizard, V-Max. The, you, you the about. Charizard, V-Max. So one, two, two three. three. Four, we'll put those in front, yep. And then we go like this. Yep, so the last two Energy, will be your hits. Limwood Tangle, Lyron, Simipore, Snubble, Meltan, Bunnelby, Paras, Larvitar, Carablast, and Flygon. I don't know any of those. I did not think I was gonna get excited, but my heart rate's <laughs> going now. I'm getting amped. You wanna open one here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, I will definitely become an addict and lose my whole life savings before we're done.
Poopitar. <laughs> <laughs> kind of Energy, crazy pile. Corpus the dark Corps, guy. Rose, Vanlish, Jigglypuff. Is Jigglypuff worth anything? Oh, name? Jigglypuff's a good one. Yeah. It's the only one I recognize. It's common. <laughs> Panpour, Spinarak, Bone Sweet, Shinnetok, and Vanillux. Vanilla Ice. Mine. This first edition box right here is worth 20 grand. This one here is worth like 15 grand. Just for a box of hearts. Guys, I got a deal. I only paid 500. No, it's I'm probably going to buy another box before we leave. So this here, this box here, it's about $1500 uh -huh. and it's a re it's like a the design looks like the OG 1999 oh. set. So people like this because you pull the Charizard that looks like the first edition. Are there any other valuable cards in there other than the Charizard? So the Charizard in here, PSA 10 is about eight, six to eight grand. Wow. PSA 10. It's hard to pull. Uh, there's the hollow, the reverse hollow. Do they not come they in have, tens right out of the box? You would think so, but even if you look at some of these cards that you just pulled, this is your best bet. Most expensive, biggest for <laughs> Which box do you want? Feel them out. Which one do you like? You knew this was gonna yeah, happen. Yeah, yeah. You knew this was gonna happen. <laughs> you <laughs> son of a bitch. Fix Ratata. Follow up. Under trainer. I get it now. I get it. It's a rush. 15 minutes later. <laughs> Guys, I don't know what happened. I always thought people, the Pokemon card, like, fad or the, the trend or the craze was just out, like, stupid. And I'm not gonna lie, I thought it was stupid, and now I think it might be my favorite new hobby. You gotta catch them all. I'm yeah, trying to catch them all. Nice. There you go! Oh! Hell yeah, I just got a Charizard. I don't know what that means, but everybody's pumped. That's big, bro. <laughs> That's what you're looking for. I, I saw, yeah. He said, stop touching it. I'll just push our flights back a few more days. Uh, come energy, on, baby. Come on, Weedle, baby. Ratata, no whammies, Tangela, no whammies, Staryu, no whammies. Energy, right here. Nine Tails, and Polyrath. Ooh, nice. Nobody's screaming, so that means I probably didn't get a good card. <laughs> Many hours later. Is it yours, Chameleon Air? Huh? I got a Charmander. Charmander. Charmander! Go with me! Punk. Are you guys feeding him Charizard? Take this from me. <laughs> wow. Before I drop it. Hit that buzzer button right there. Hit the buzzer. Yeah. Ah! yeah. Well, don't be scared. Come on down. Open it up. Oh, yeah. Ah! Box. Yo! All right, so we came down to open some Pokemon cards. We opened three boxes and ended up with five Charizards. Four of which were pulled by hands over there. Yeah. And I got one, but, but still. Just remember who chose the boxes. Yeah. Technically, yeah. Technically, you didn't just because you guys chose both. <laughs> but I'm the excited one and I don't know why. This break is... In, break in Pokemon cards. Five Charizards right here, baby. Yeah, it's like it just this is nuts. I did not expect this. This is, this is, this is cool. That's very cool. Man. Good job. All right, guys. So we just got done opening the Pokemon cards. We're going to take our five Charizard cards and a handful of other, like, apparently really nice cards that we had. We're going to ship them out uh, to the company PSA that does the grading on them. And they're going to tell us whether they're basically a one through ten on the condition uh, level. And we're hoping they come back at nines and tens. Because if they do, each card could be worth anywhere between, like, three and ten thousand dollars. So... Where I spent 3,500 bucks on those three boxes of cards, one card could pay for the whole box. So, I might have just like double, tripled my money, but we'll find out in like 10 days or so once we get our cards back from being graded for PSA. Coming off of our high a little bit, got some great cards, like five Charizards. Um, and while we were back there, the crew up here has been going over our cards, our find from the warehouse. And I believe, if I'm not wrong, you've got a number for me or an offer. Yeah, yeah I mean, you have two options. Okay. One is we can get these cards graded for you and you can wait. Get a PSA 10 or 9, great to be high value. If you get lower, blah, blah, blah. My offer would be 28,700, where I take the gamble. So I'll give you 28,700 cash right now. I'm gonna have to wait a month or two to figure all this stuff out. I'll deal with the headaches. I might make 50 grand or 60 grand or 70 grand, just to be blunt with you. I might make more. We I may mean, break I, even. Right? I might lose. I'm willing to gamble, that's what we do here. But I wanna be clear if I make 60 or 70 grand, you're not mad at me, because that might happen. 28,700. 
Okay. Now, here's the deal. I'm all about. I'm all about. Gambling. You know, well, gambling apparently <laughs> now, and and you know, um, spreading the wealth and sharing sharing you know the profits. So I don't care. I'm, I don't care if you make a million. If you make a million, then call <laughs> me back. But uh, twenty eight seven. So you know, I'll be honest with you. I paid fifteen grand for everything inside the warehouse. Oh, okay. We've already got about thirty five grand out of it. All right with the stuff that we sold. So 35 plus the 28, that puts us right around like $65,000 for a $15,000 purchase. I've made mon my money, you make your money, that's a deal. Awesome. I'm in. Nice. Dude, good. did you guys hear that? $28,700 on a bunch of cards that were this close to getting thrown away. Man, did you hear that? That's like you my mind blown right like Plus the, the wait, I heard the spread Hold on, we, have, we, so. we owe a little yeah. bit of money for the Pokemon cards, but that's all gonna you know work itself out. We made probably some money on the Charizards. All I know is that somehow I'm now in the trading card business. I'm gonna get damn good at it. You watch. And we got the Charizard Master with us. Ooh, stack of cash. Look at that. Stack of cash. Ooh, Ooh, this is worth twenty thousand. Okay. And then this is the eighty-seven hundred and fifties. Eighty-seven hundred and fifties. Look at this, guys. Um, so, all I can say is, if you have any trading cards that you think might be worth something. You should probably hit the, what's your email? How do they get a hold of you? Uh, Thecoffeebreakers.com. Thecoffeebreakers.com. Pokemon cards, trading cards. I was opening WWF cards back there, so I just made $28,700. <laughs> this is wild. I, I feel like I'm getting punked right now. I feel like they're going to stop me and be like, just kidding, we want our money back. But, dude, that was awesome, man. Thank you, guys. Absolutely. That was, this is such a rad concept. Man. I'm here. This is it. All right, well, we're going to go then. Thanks, brother. Later. Yeah, take care. See you guys. I wish I was just buying yes, them I up right now. No, man. I still think you ought to. I'll, I'll go home tonight and I'll forget all about it. No, you won't. Well, guys, there you have it. That was, I mean, just from top to bottom, one of the most incredible experiences ever. Totally unexpected. Uh, when I bought the warehouse, I expected to get some cool tools, equipment, maybe make my money back and end up with some cool stuff. When they started talking about the cards, I was like, yeah, right, it's fantasy. And then when we found that box of, of cards that were like in the sleeves, that changed everything. Because you gotta you gotta realize we've already made like, I just like 35, 40 grand from the equipment out of the warehouse. And then we just sold those cars down in LA for close to 30 grand, like 28 grand. So what are we like? I mean, we're like almost 70 grand. I paid 15 grand for the warehouse. Made a solid, let's see if I can do some math right now. It's been a long day. $55,000 ballpark, that's not about right? Yeah, that's not about right. Uh, I mean, that's a good day at work. Granted, we had to dig through a lot of garbage and a lot of gross stuff, but uh, I'm pretty sure any one of you guys and any one of us would do the same thing for that kind of money. So it doesn't always shake out like that. Uh, we do have pretty good luck, but I mean, even that was like really good luck even by our standards. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I learned a ton about trading cards. Uh, Never really understood the hype until I was actually sitting there opening those Pokemon cards, which I'm not a Pokemon guy. I'm not a card guy at all. But I'm telling you, when the, like, the hype of getting a really valuable card and you don't know what you're going to get next, I'm not going to lie. So I'm not going to tell you try it. That's all I can say. If you guys want to check out more, if you have any valuable cards that you want to get appraised or you know, sell or whatever, definitely check out the Coffee Breakers. Um, it's thecoffeebreakers.com or you can find Coffee Breakers on Instagram. Uh, my buddy Dan has got just a great business going down there. Like honestly, I'm pumped. It was time well spent. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for uh, the support. And uh, guys, by the time you watch this, we're probably going to be already at 500,000 subs, if not like shooting way past it. So that means we got another giveaway coming very, very soon for one of you guys. So stay tuned. When you say pack, you're talking just a little sleeve, right? Uh, what did you do? Yeah. I created a monster apparently. Yeah. And now hands is just going off. Hands, you gotta do it. You gotta no, do it. You gotta do it. Hands, do it. Come on. All right. so I'll chip it.